Welcome back to the New Jersey Morning Show. I'm Mike Favetta. Next month, on Monday, April 8th, people across the United States are in for a special treat as a solar eclipse will be visible across the entire country. From coast to coast, people will see the moon slowly move in front of the sun, blocking some of its light in a partial eclipse. That includes us here in New Jersey between 2 and 4 p.m., blocking more than 90% of the sun. However, for more than 31 million people across 15 states, as close as upstate New York and western Pennsylvania, they will be able to see the moon completely cover the sun in a total solar eclipse, briefly turning day into night. The contiguous U.S. won't see another total solar eclipse until 2044, 20 years from now. Joining us now is NASA expert Anita Day to tell us more about how we can prepare for this exciting show. Anita, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So one month from now, people across the North America will see this total solar eclipse. Can you briefly describe what will happen during the celestial event? So as you said, the moon is going to move in front of the sun and cover the face of the sun. It'll cast a shadow on the earth. Part of that shadow will be what we call totality, when the sun is completely covered. And there in New Jersey, you'll have a partial coverage. You'll be at about 90%. You'll see a thin sliver of sun left uh, uh, around the moon. So even though you're not in the path of totality, you could drive to get there if you wanted. Uh, I think it'll still be a gorgeous sight. We uh, will also have a partial eclipse in Maryland where I will be. And I'm looking forward to sharing that experience with my daughter. You know, back in 2017, I drove down to Charleston, South Carolina, was able to see totality, and it was one of the coolest experiences ever. This is why I can't wait, driving upstate New York to see it for myself, bringing the wife along, and I think it'll be a really interesting experience. But here in New Jersey, if you're staying put in the Garden State, we've been told never to look at the sun directly during an eclipse, except during totality, but we won't have totality here in New Jersey. So what is the safest way that viewers can view the eclipse without hurting their eyes? Yeah, the answer is eclipse glasses. These are NASA's eclipse glasses. Um, <clears throat> you always have to protect your eyes when you're looking at the sun. Sunglasses are not enough. They're not dark enough. They don't filter out enough radiation. And we normally don't look at the sun. There's no reason to, but an eclipse is reason to. So eclipse glasses like this, that hopefully you get from a reputable source, will protect your eyes. Um, and since you'll be in a partial view of the eclipse, you can never take these off when you're looking up. Those who are in totality will be able to take off their glasses when the sun is completely covered. But in New Jersey, like me in Maryland, we won't take off our glasses. And I see a lot of those shadows that you see there, those crescents. Uh, it's, you'll be able to do it yourself. I used a Ritz cracker uh, projecting you know, the crescents on the ground. It's really cool. A colander, also fun. We'll yep. talk more about those a little bit later. But like I mentioned, back in 2017, we had the total solar eclipse. How is this one different in 2024? Yeah. So the path of this one is different. We're going from Texas to Maine in the United States. The last one went west. Uh, and there were also fewer people in the path. Uh, there are as many as 31 million people in this path. And of course, many more will drive to get in the path. The path of this eclipse will also be wider because the moon's a little bit closer to the earth. So more opportunity for people to see the eclipse. Uh, we're also approaching, or perhaps we're already in solar maximum. That's a period when the sun is really active. It goes through 11 year cycles roughly. So that means when the sun is completely covered by the moon, you'll be able to see the, um, the corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun, and that will be more tangled and wispy and maybe look a little bit more like Albert Einstein's hair uh, because of the solar maximum. Wow, that's really interesting stuff. So with all of the things happening in space, you can kind of do some citizen science here at the ground. Uh, what are some other ways that viewers can get involved with solar science? Maybe, like I mentioned before, the Ritz Cracker, the colander, uh, ways that you can experience kind of some unique things here in New Jersey on April 8th. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked because this just proves science is for everybody. The eclipse is a very accessible event for all of us. Uh, so making observations in your own backyard with the colander, with your glasses, that's science. But you can also participate in uh, science projects that we have where you help scientists gather data to understand the eclipse and year round for other projects. 
I will talk about them, but first let me say where you can find the uh, projects. Go to go.nasa.gov slash eclipse2024. There are lots of projects, but I'll touch on two. There's Globe Observer. That's a year-round project, but they've added a mode for the eclipse where you can download it on your phone and you can record air temperature and clouds during the eclipse. Another great one is Eclipse Soundscapes, where you record uh, the, the sounds of the environment around you, and it helps scientists understand what insects and wildlife will do during an eclipse. That's one of the most unique things, I think, is hearing the crickets and the cicadas, you know, start up. Uh, even though we're in April, you'll start to hear some of those bugs in the middle of the afternoon, you know, between two and four. So that sounds like a lot of fun. NASA expert Anita Day, thank you so much for joining us here on the New Jersey Morning Show. Thank you for having me.